Hello, friends, and welcome to r slash I don't work here, lady, and our story for today. No, Karen, I do not work here. I work at the same company as you. Let's continue this conversation with your boss. A little bit of background. I've been working at a large-ish company for a little over a year. This company offers an online service to anyone willing to pay. I started off in the customer service department that takes calls from non-military, non-business customers. While my department didn't deal with any sensitive information, my call center was still located in the company's secure facility, located in the middle of nowhere. The daily commute was long, but there was never any traffic, so it wasn't bad. The nearest town is about 30 minutes away along the highway, which is where I lived. While it's not a huge town, it's big enough to contain a Walmart. At the time of this story, I had just moved over to the Information Security, IS department, in an entry-level position. I ended up taking a minor pay cut, but that was more than made up by the gas I saved by working from home. Unfortunately, I had to wear a uniform any days I worked from the office, which was twice a week. The uniform was designed to look very similar to our physical security staff with some notable differences, like the words information security plastered on the back with my name stenciled on the front. One day after driving home from work, I decided to stop by Walmart to get something for dinner. While looking at some rice, I hear a screech from the other aisle along with some incoherent yelling. Out of curiosity, I wander over. This was a mistake. As the moment I laid eyes on the I want to speak your manager haircut, the woman it's attached to turned and started stomping in my direction while making direct eye contact with me. She shall be known as Karen. I didn't have long, but I managed to size up the situation. Walmart store employee, who shall be known as store employee, Staring after Karen and me, Karen's face contorted in anger. The last thing I noticed before yelling was the ID around her neck. It was a very unique ID, which contained her name, a photo, a unique number assigned only to her, and a dumb-looking anti-photocopy holographic security animal thing. I had almost an identical one in my pocket, only with my own information. Karen, with dilated pupils, slightly shaky hands, and a punctuationless vocabulary, attempted to explain to me that store employee was extremely rude, threatened to kill-slash-harm her, and refused to get her cigarettes. Karen further explained at 90 decibels that she wants store employee fired and arrested for assault. Without missing a beat, she then starts demanding that I pay attention to her. I was, in fact, looking around, first trying to see if we were in line of sight of the store cameras, trying to see if there were any other witnesses down the aisle and trying to keep track of the store employee's movements. I take a deep breath. Putting both hands in my pockets, I then stare down at Karen with as much anger as I can muster, which causes a moment respite in the avalanche of obscenities, allegations, and demands that have been offending the ear. With one hand, I grab my phone in my pocket, double tap the power button, very carefully swiping across the screen, then I press the volume down button. Those who are familiar with Android will recognize that I just started recording a video on my phone. I really need to make a hotkey that takes less effort. After I hear my phone beep, I take both hands out of my pocket, leaving the phone behind. With a placating gesture, I beg forgiveness of Karen and ask her to calmly repeat what she said to me. Karen, as if she's wading through a sea of stupidity, sighs deeply and regales her tale of woe, this time with minor differences to details, such as the store employee really assaulting Karen instead of just threatening to do so. At this point, the store employee leaves the aisle and I lose track of her. The following conversation ensues. Karen, well, what are you going to do about it? Me, I apologize. However, I'm not going to do anything about this. I highly recommend you go talk to a store manager. Karen, what? I demand you arrest store employee now. I want to press charges. Me, Unfortunately, I'm not law enforcement and cannot arrest anyone. I still recommend you speak to the store's manager, or if you're so inclined, speak to the security out front. Karen. Fine, go get your manager and bring him to me. Me. Ma'am, I feel there's been some miscommunication here. I'm starting to get the feeling that you think I work here in some capacity. I'd like to take this moment to inform you that I do not. I work at the same company you do. Now, please... Karen, bullcrap, I recognize your uniform, your security, it says so right there, points at the word security, just above my name on the front of my shirt. Just give me the manager and I'll have your job too. Me, ma'am, may I please have your name and ID number? At this point, I've already memorized the ID number, it's only six digits long, and her first name, however, her last name was obscenely long, like a foreign name. Karen then looks confused. 
She takes her ID and stuffs it into her blouse, hiding it from my view. She starts to sputter in confusion and rage when I feel it tap on my shoulder. I turn around and see an older gentleman with store employee behind him. A quick glance tells me this is the store manager, who shall be known as store manager. Store manager. What's going on here? Karen. I want both of them fired and arrested. They assaulted me. Karen then goes on an incomprehensible tirade, suggesting that I and store employee had teamed up on her and did something wasn't clear to her. While she was yelling, I could see the store manager wanting to interject. I put my hand up to stop him and made a motion indicating we should let Karen finish. When there was a noticeable gap in the auditory assault, I took the opportunity to ask the store manager to speak with him and store employee alone. Store manager nods, turns to address Karen. I'm very sorry that you had such a horrible experience. I assure you, we'll sort this all out immediately. Everyone, please follow me to my office. Karen, about time. I demand compensation. I want them arrested. And appears to start another tirade. Store manager now walking away. Please follow me. So we follow store manager with Karen making comments about how she's going to enjoy this and something about court and being able to retire, etc., once we reach the store manager's office, he asks that Karen wait outside while he interviews me and store employee. We're quickly ushered into his office, and the door closes just as Karen starts to object. I immediately apologize to store manager, explain that Karen works at the same company I do, and I fully plan on reporting her to our HR for this. Although what she does off the clock is her business, I personally think I could make a case against her for verbally assaulting me. I asked the store manager for details around the event, so I may explain it in detail to HR. It turns out the store employee was returning something to the shelf when Karen cornered her and started demanding a specific brand of cigarettes. This brand was no longer being sold, and the store constantly receives complaints about this, the store manager explained to me. Apparently, when this was explained to Karen, she blew up at store employee. I suspected this was the screech I heard. The store manager, in turn, asks me about my conversation with Karen. I pull out my phone, stop the recording, and play back the video for them to hear. I ask the store manager if he would be willing to send me a copy of the surveillance footage of the incident. In a joking tone, the store manager replies, I'll share if you do. I have no issue with this, and we exchange contact information. Unfortunately, on my way out, Karen saw fit to harass me one final time, screeching about how the cops are on the way and that I'm going to be arrested and so on. I just ignored her and continued to walk out. I figured the store manager could handle it from there. The next day, I look up Karen in our databases. She's a call center employee doing similar work that I did, except she works on military contracts only. On average, she speaks to about 50 customers a day. I type up my interaction with Karen and shoot it over to her manager, who shall be known as Manager. I then send a similar email to HR, only this time I included a copy of my own recording edited to be only audio. While waiting for a response, I received an email from store manager. He provided me a copy of the surveillance videos, although they did not contain audio. Store manager then outlined events that took place after my departure. It turns out Karen called the cops while waiting outside the store manager's office. When they arrived, they spoke to Karen outside, then spoke to store manager. They didn't really explain to the store manager as he was quick to show them the surveillance video, which appears to have answered all their questions. The cops then left the store. The store manager did not see Karen again that night, so he was unsure what happened. I responded back with a copy of my own video and a thank you note. I also mentioned that I forgot to get store employee's name and asked if I could get it. Once the store manager responded and included a written account from store employee, I took the store employee's information and looked her up on our many customer databases. Although she was once a customer, she's not been one for a while. Karen's manager responded to my email explaining that this does not surprise her. Karen has been one of those trouble employees for a little while now. Multiple write-ups, documented recordings where Karen starts yelling at customers unprovoked, etc. The most recent was just a few days earlier. I send an updated email to HR with my new findings. Given my role and the scope of my position, I can no longer do any more digging into Karen without approval from HR. I voice my concerns to HR about the potential risk Karen poses to the company. I don't hear back from HR until the end of the workday, where I'm invited to a meeting with them. That day, I'm working from home, so I have to join the meeting remotely. We have three conference rooms with large TVs and cameras, one of which was reserved by HR for this incident. 
I join the meeting, knowing my face is plastered all over the wall every time I speak. The meeting starts off with HR clarifying some facts with me and the manager. We go over video from store manager, my own recordings, and review the written statement from store employee. HR determines that Karen's employment needs to be terminated. Manager is in agreement, given Karen's history. However, manager would like additional time to find a replacement. HR and manager ask for my input, for which I have none. This is not within the scope of my job. However, I feel I need to stay involved to cut off her access at a moment's notice to limit retaliation opportunities. Manager and HR go back and forth for a while until the meeting's over when manager agrees to let Karen go immediately. Karen is then called into the meeting. She's silent and meek as she takes her seat. Karen's slightly startled at the sudden movement of the camera as they track her movement. These cameras are designed to auto-track movement and sound, so it's not abnormal, but I doubt Karen has used these rooms that much, so she might not have expected that. Manager asks if she knows why she's here. Karen bursts into tears, exclaiming that that guy was so rude and obscene to her that she just couldn't take it anymore, and that's why she yelled at him. She apologizes and is willing to take whatever HR-mandated training is required. She's willing to learn from her mistakes. I'm confused. I see the same thing on HR's face, however, the manager appears to understand. The manager asks some questions, and it becomes clear that Karen is talking about a bad phone call she received earlier that morning. I'm not in any hurry, so I sit back and let the manager run the show. The manager plays the phone recording for us, where we clearly hear a rude customer cussing out Karen. Karen is immediately rude back. Call ends with Karen hanging up on the customer, saying, Get a life! Karen is still remorseful and extremely meek. Manager thanks Karen for her honesty. However, that's not the point of this meeting. The manager then explains, due to her anger issues and history of not improving, she's sorry to have to let Karen go. That was my sign to turn off all her access. The good news is that Karen didn't have access to a whole lot, so kicking her out of our systems was quick and easy. While I was working on this, HR and manager explained the severance package and so on. Then something happened to grab Karen's attention. I'm honestly not sure what happened, but I think I unmuted my microphone or something because all of a sudden Karen was staring up at the TV where I can only assume she saw my smug face. I hear a halt in the conversation and I turn to look at the screen, which is when I see Karen staring at me. At first she looked confused, then that quickly turned into a smirk, which was rapidly replaced with a look of horror. Then she stood up, pointed at the screen, and demanded that I be arrested, claiming that I assaulted her at Walmart the night before. And it wasn't her fault. Breaking down in tears, she starts repeating, Keep him away from me! I speak up and ask if HR or the manager would like me to call physical security. HR thanks me, asks me to do just that, but HR would also like that I leave the meeting now, which I do. The next day, I see her termination paperwork come through. My department helps with all these requests, doing a quick audit on recent activity to make sure there was nothing harmful done to the company. Unfortunately, I'm not privy to what happened after I left the meeting, so I don't have any juicy ending here, just that Karen lost her job and might have been escorted to the gates of the complex. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video to the end, and we'll see you on the next one.